Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I'm going to give you a really quick overview of circular motion and the mathematics that is associated with that. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and maybe buy me a coffee. If we have an object that is, let's say, moving, let's say, in that direction, and it now experiences a force that is perpendicular to its motion, so we say, okay, I'm going to get a value that is going to get a force in that direction, what happens to the particle? Well, obviously, it's going to change direction, but if that force remains always perpendicular to the direction of its velocity at any one instant, it will undergo circular motion. As long as that force in magnitude remains constant, as long as it is always perpendicular to the direction of the velocity at any given instant, it will now undergo circular motion. And this force here, which is acting towards the center of over here ends up being a name that we call the centripetal force and I'm going to call it FC. Now what does that centripetal force depend on? Well it depends obviously on the mass that the object has here. It also depends on the velocity that the article has and finally it depends on the radius and so you end up getting that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the velocity squared divided by Ah, and so that's our centripetal force formula. Clearly, second law suggests that if I divide this by m, I get the centripetal acceleration, which is just v squared over r. Because we are traveling in a circle, often we don't use linear notation such as v. And so what we use is the concept of angular velocity, which is about the rotation around an angle. Now mathematically, that becomes v equals r omega, where omega is the rate of change of angle. In other words, omega is basically delta over t, and this is going to be measured in terms of radians. And so now we have a new formula. We get m omega squared r as our, again, our centripetal force in this case, but now we're talking about rate of change of angle. Now this then leads on in terms of understanding, for example, circular motion. So if the centripetal force, for example, is actually the gravitational force, such as the moon experiencing the force as it orbits around the Earth, then what we end up getting is a mathematical formula that allows us to work out the orbital velocity. In other words, the centripetal force in this case is the gravitational force. If we have a charge moving in a magnetic field, it experiences a force perpendicular to its motion. And now what we end up getting is we have the force due to its charge, often referred to as the Lorentz force, and that becomes equal to the centripetal force, which is our mv squared over r. So it actually underpins many particular topics where objects are moving in a circular path. Well, I hope that gives you a quick overview of circular motion. Please like, share and subscribe and consider buying me a coffee. Take care. Bye.